I think hitting 50,000 miles on a vehicle is a milestone and not in the sense that it's like an accomplishment or anything because relative 50,000 miles is not really that many miles, especially for a Toyota. That's barely breaking it in, right? But it is significant in my opinion because you can learn a lot about a vehicle in its first 50,000 miles. My third generation Toyota Tacoma has now surpassed 50,000 miles. So in this video, I just wanted to talk about how it's holding up. Specifically, are there any problems that I've had, anything big that I've encountered? And I wanna talk about stuff I would have looked out for or if I could magically jump back four years and tell myself when I bought this truck brand new, here are some of the things you can look out for in the first 50,000 miles of owning this truck. Now, spoiler alert, this isn't going to be a video where I like reveal some big problems I've had with my Toyota Tacoma because in all honesty, this truck has treated me so, so well over the first 50,000 miles. It's been more than I could have ever hoped for. It's been really reliable. But as much as I really do love this truck, which I hope is evidenced by the videos I make about it every single week here on this channel, there are some issues that have come up. And hopefully this video is just informational for you guys. Maybe you can take it with a grain of salt. I don't know if other people who have third gen Toyota Tacomas have also experienced these issues in the first 50,000 miles, but this is just my own experience, what you might want to look out for if you've got a newer Tacoma. Now, for context, I daily drive my truck, so most of my miles have come from driving to work every single day, although I do take the occasional off-road trip, so it's got some miles on the dirt, as well as wear and tear from those sorts of things. But the off-road stuff is such a small percentage compared to on the pavement. My Tacoma is also slightly modified from its factory configuration. Now, I wouldn't say, at least in my own opinion, that I've done anything super extreme with it, but I've got slightly larger and heavier tires. I've got aftermarket Fox Performance Elite Series shocks, which gave my truck about an inch and a half of lift all around. And in my bed, I have a decked drawer system. I do have a bunch of other things like a front steel bumper, steel rock sliders, and a ton of stuff on my interior, but I don't want to get into everything in this video. The reason I'm even mentioning these things is because some of the issues or things I'm going to bring up about my truck in this video could very well be attributed to A, what I use my truck for, and B, because of the modifications I've done to it. It's not necessarily the fault of the truck itself. With that being said though, again, I don't think I've used this truck to the extreme or done anything hugely different from its factory configuration. I think I've stuck decently close to how Toyota intended these trucks to be used. But yeah, just wanted to put that out here to preface the video. Okay, so starting out here in the front of the truck, this thing happened pretty much right exactly when I hit 50,000 miles, weirdly enough. So I was looking underneath my truck during an oil change and noticed this. The tie rod boot on my driver's side, as you can see, has some pretty fresh fluid. And actually, this is really just on the driver's side. My passenger side looks clean as far as I can tell. At first, I was not sure what this was, but I quickly realized that I think my steering rack is leaking. Now, I will say it is not dripping. It hasn't been dripping for two weeks. In fact, it looks the same as when I first saw it. My steering is fine. There's no burning smell. And my power steering level has been okay. I know it looks lower than these two lines, but these are the hot max and min lines. But the level has remained at the cold minimum line for the last two weeks. So I'm not like rapidly losing power steering fluid. Now, I'm not trying to downplay the severity of this. And if I'm being honest with you guys, I really don't know like to what degree or how bad this really is. I did take it to one Toyota dealership who wanted to charge over $2,000 to replace the whole rack, which I understand the service cost for replacing a rack is really expensive, but over $2,000 seemed a little high. And then they also took it to the Mossy dealership MPB here in San Diego, where I talked to Eddie, who, by the way, shout out. He's one of the service guys, and he told me that the leak didn't look too, too bad. He said I didn't need to replace the whole rack now, and maybe it's just a seal or something. I don't think this rack issue is like super uncommon for these Tacomas, and I'm curious if any of you out there have had to replace yours. I know this happened right pretty much at the 50,000 
10,000 mile mark, but again, I'm not sure if that's normally where it tends to fail. I don't know, maybe you guys can let me know. Hopefully it's not too bad, but if I end up having to replace the rack, then I guess I'll probably be making a video on that. Okay, so this next issue, I'm not sure if it will bother everyone, but it certainly bothered me. This instrument cluster plastic scratches so, so easily when you wipe it down, even with a microfiber towel. And then once it's scratched up, it looks like there's a ton of swirl marks in it, especially when you're driving and the sunlight hits it. Oh, that used to bug me so much when I was driving because you're looking at this all the time. If that's something that's not gonna bother you, great. But if you are like me and it will, my advice would be to pick up this kit. You get a thick PPF type of film that is made to exactly fit this instrument cluster. The film itself is scratch resistant and it also hides your existing scratches completely no matter how the sunlight hits it. So even my truck was all marred up but I put the screen protect over it and now you can't even tell that the scratches used to be there. I'll say that something like this is a premium product and it's got a premium price tag but I was seriously thinking about just like replacing this whole plastic piece, looking up this part number for Toyota and buying a new one and putting it on. But that was before I knew about Screen Protect, which I've had on for probably like 40,000 miles. It's been great. It's been worth it for me. I do talk a lot about it here on my channel, but I swear it's for good reason. So for this next thing I was gonna talk about, if you aren't planning to have or don't have aftermarket shocks with remote reservoirs, you can completely skip this part. And before I get into it, let me just say, this is 100% not a flaw by Toyota because technically these trucks aren't designed with remote reservoirs since none of the trim levels have shocks from the factory that come with remote reservoirs. The pros come with piggyback reservoirs in the rear and I think internal reservoirs in the front, but a lot of us still end up getting aftermarket shocks with remote reservoirs because they really do make a huge difference in terms of ride quality. So I thought I would mention this issue I was having in this video for that reason. So up on this front remote reservoir, you can see I've got these dual speed compression knobs. Now I do have a lot of videos if you're curious about what these even do, but with these specific Fox Performance Elite Series shocks, you can actually adjust for low or high speed compression. The way this reservoir mounts onto the frame of the truck is there's this bracket that mounts to the frame. Then there's these brackets that hold in the reservoir with these little screws. So I think I've moved up this reservoir as high as I possibly can. And this bracket mounts using an existing hole in the frame. So I think I mounted it correctly. But what ended up happening actually on one of my recent off-road trips was my sway bar, which you can see right over here, actually it came up high enough and hit this smaller DSC knob, so the low speed compression knob. You can see there's a little bit of scuff in the metal over here and the sway bar is a little bit chipped here as well from where it contacted the DSC knob. And while I can still adjust the high speed compression knob, so the outer one, as you guys can see, with this inner one, I actually, it's stuck. I can't rotate it. There is a little screw right here that I have tried playing around with. I've tried spraying around the knob to maybe get rid of any debris, because I know occasionally debris can build up there, especially if you're going off-roading. But this thing is just absolutely stuck. So um, I think what ended up happening was that inner shaft bent when the sway bar made contact with the low speed compression DSC knob. I thought I would be okay because I do have the sway bar spacer kit, which pushes it down, which theoretically should push it further away from the DSC knobs. But unfortunately for right now, I can't adjust that specific shock for low speed compression until I find time to take it to Fox to get it serviced. And that's been something I've been meaning to get done, but it's just been a little tricky for me because again, this truck is my daily driver. So if I take off this front shock, I can't drive it until it's done getting serviced by Fox. And while I would normally drive my Land Cruiser for a couple days to work, it's not at my house right now because it's getting work done. But anyways, if any of you guys out there have remote reservoirs and you have your sway bar on, let me know if you've run into this issue as well. This is isolated to 
just the passenger side and not the driver's side so far those knobs are completely fine but again to reiterate this was totally self-inflicted and not necessarily a design flaw with my truck This next thing is another one of those things that could probably be more so attributed to stuff I did with my truck and not necessarily a design flaw by Toyota. So actually right now I'm not running the OEM rear leaf springs because of what I'm about to talk about and I'm actually running Deaver suspension. It's their N98 leaf spring and if you remember a couple months ago I went to AccuTune off-road, got those installed. My issue with the stock leaf strings was really that they sagged over time and you could really see my leaf spring went from looking like this to more so flat and this probably was accelerated by the fact that again I have the decked drawer system and it's loaded with off-road gear so my truck bed is fully loaded pretty much 100% of the time but even when I first installed the deck I measured the rear height of my truck before and after and it didn't change and then even before I installed the deck, when my truck bed was pretty much empty most of the time, it was like two years into owning my truck. And I remember my coworker backed his truck up next to mine and he had a brand new third gen and his truck, which was also a TRD off-road, brand new from the factory, sat like almost an inch higher than mine. And I didn't take a measuring tape and actually compare, but it surprised me a little bit because my tires are also about an inch larger in diameter than the stock tires are. So I think it had to do with my stock leaf springs. And then once I installed my deck and ran that for the next two years, I just really started noticing the accelerated wear, so to speak, or really just my ride height decreasing more quickly over time. Now, it wasn't really that I was concerned with how my ride height looked in the rear. It was more so that because I was getting less ride height than I was before, my rear shocks were more compressed. Them being more compressed all the time meant I had less up travel. And you can check out my AccuTune video for more details about this problem and what I did to solve it. But I had started to notice, especially when I was going off-roading, that the rear shocks would bottom out soon. So that was just my experience with the stock OEM leaf springs and again perhaps that static load with the deck drawer system and all my gear was more weight than what was expected of them. But when it started messing with my rear ride quality that's when I decided to change them out. I wanted to bring this up too because I'm not alone in someone who carries a lot of weight in their bed full time. You know, you've got a lot of people out there that have bed racks, they've got rooftop tents, maybe they have a camper shell. All of those are fairly common truck mods that also add weight to the back of the truck. And I'm curious if other people's rear OEM leaf springs also kind of just sagged over time. So if you plan on having a setup like that, just be cautioned that you might experience this with your leaf springs as well. Okay, so I just want to say that these next couple things I'm about to mention in this video are really minor and I almost don't want to talk about them because I'm afraid you guys are going to come for me in the comments. I promise they're not petty and I'm not complaining. They're just things that I've noticed about the truck or like really, really minor issues that have come up between zero and 50,000 miles. I'm more so just curious to hear if you guys have these issues as well or they're isolated to me. I'm not sure how many of you guys have noticed, but there's this like plastic piece that comes on the rear bedside. Now, I think this is a shield for if like rocks and debris and stuff comes up. If you look closely, there are a ton of little chips and I know these are from off-roading for sure in this plastic piece and also in fact, here on the bottom part of my rear fender as well. But that's not what I want to talk about. I actually want to talk about just on this side, how this plastic piece has come up so many different times. It doesn't want to stay on for some reason. And I honestly, I don't know what I did to damage it. I don't know if like this part of my bedside is dented. It's so odd because I don't know what I would have done to dent it. And there's no like visible damage. But yeah, this plastic piece has kept coming off for like the last 20,000 miles. And I've had to 3M tape it so many different times. And it's just like such a small minor thing. And I don't feel like ordering this part because it's probably going to be ridiculously expensive for something so minor. But yeah, I'm unsure 
sure why this piece is loose on my truck. The driver's side is completely okay, and you can see how it fits like really perfectly. It is not loose at all, but yeah, that other side is a different story, and I don't know how it happened. So I know this issue I'm about to talk about has been an issue pretty much since day one, but basically the bumper caps on both sides of my truck don't line up straight. So like the easy way to tell is you can see with this bumper cap right here, there's quite a bit of space. It actually sits lower than this black plastic piece right here. And then on this side, it's the exact opposite. It sits just above this black plastic piece. It's kind of difficult to tell if you're not specifically looking for it because it is really just like a minor difference and this stuff honestly does not bother me at all. But literally every other person's Tacoma, just because I'm curious, I like go and look at the bumper cap alignment and most Tacomas surprisingly have uneven bumper caps. So yeah, it's not just me. And again, this is something like so, so minor. The last really, really minor thing is on the interior of my truck. These are the OEM floor mats. And what I started noticing is they started like lifting up. So you can see, I think this part of the floor mat is supposed to sit more like that. And same with this edge. I think it's a little worse on the driver's side. Actually, it looks about the same, which is kind of interesting because I thought it would be worse since I normally don't really have passengers that sit over there. So it doesn't feel like it's because of stepping on it. But yeah, within the last six months, I would say, I noticed these floor mats started to lift up a little bit. I'm not too concerned with it. I just don't want them to eventually like lift up that much or anything because that's when like dirt and mud can start to seep in. And they've done a really, really good job thus far. But I do look at these exact floor mats in other Tacomas and I've seen like the side lift up a little bit, especially for people who have had their Tacoma for several years. I don't notice it so much on the TRD Pro all weather floor mats. It's more so this style. So yeah, those are the things that probably 99% of people don't care about or wouldn't even notice, but I just noticed it and wanted to mention it in this video because I drive the truck every day. So you find out little stuff like that all the time. So those are some of the things that I've encountered with my Toyota Tacoma in the first 50,000 miles I've driven and owned it. I really hope this video didn't come across as me complaining about these issues because I really just wanted to more so be informational and just share my own experience. And again, of course, many of these problems I recognize were self-inflicted by either modifications I did or based on the way I use my truck. Overall, my stance on the Toyota Tacoma remains the same. It is a very reliable truck. It is well engineered and it is really hard to find flaws with it compared to the competition out there. I think the biggest issue for me right now is really the steering rack because that kind of caught me off guard. I do my best to follow the maintenance guide to a T and I will occasionally take it into the dealership because again, as you guys know on my channel, I do a lot of DIY maintenance, but I'm not a mechanic so I feel comfortable bringing it in every once in a while but after a while trucks go through normal wear and tear and these things just come up again I am curious if you guys have had any of these similar issues or have you had any other issues from 0 to 50,000 miles that I didn't mention in this video leave us a comment down below thank you guys so much for watching if you want to connect more with me you can follow me on my Instagram it is at Chloe Kuo Taco I post more in real time on there. But other than that, I hope I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.